Hello everyone, you're very welcome to our eight o'clock session. I'm going to give everyone a couple of minutes because you may be joining possibly from a seven o'clock um, session or you may be just a wee bit late. And um, so I will, I'll, I'll talk in a couple of minutes, but sure, I might as well keep you entertained, I suppose. And uh, before I start, um, I would encourage, oh, sorry. My name is Eta McGuigan. I work in the admissions office in Maynooth University. And I suppose I look after all the science and engineering um, degree programs. Um, I'm going to give you my email address in a few minutes when I start, but I would also encourage you um, to follow us on all our social media channels. It's actually a great way to get the most up-to-date information on Student Life at Maynooth um, about course development, um, about actually anything Maynooth University um, keeping follow us on our um, various social media channels. Um, today I'm very fortunate that I'm joined by my excellent colleague Laura Donlan who is monitoring the questions and answers throughout this so please feel, feel to ask Laura any questions um, but I'm also going to give you uh, my email address and I, I don't know about you but sometimes um, when I go to a presentation I mightn't think of something to ask at the presentation. It could be 24 hours later, it could be a week later, it could be a month later or whatever. It suddenly dawns on me that I think, oh, why didn't I ask your one X and Y? Um, I should have got the answer then. But, you know, sometimes, you know, I might plant a seed tonight and it might take a wee bit for it to grow. I never hesitate to drop me an email. Um, actually, anything about Minnesota University, you can drop me an email. Um, I won't know all the answers, um, but I sometimes it's good to have a contact in the university that can find the answers out for you. What's also good about sending me an email is I can send you particular links, say to particular module information or um, more detailed information. But feel free, as I say, to ask us a question. Um, I'm going to, what else can I talk about for maybe one or two more minutes because I see other people uh, joining in. Um, I suppose before I start, um, I work in the admissions office, but by training, I'm an engineer um, and I love talking about STEM because it has been very good to me in my career that I've changed paths many times. Um, uh, throughout my career and I remember when I was doing my leave insert and I said to the guidance counsellor um, I, I was an average student unfortunately I wasn't brilliant at anything kind of you know average at all subjects apart from French I was just a disaster at French um, I remember thinking I don't know what I want to do um, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll still say I don't know what I want to do but primary school teaching because I love the Gielga was there and um, maybe being a lawyer was there an accountant was there I'm really bad with money but I thought I might make a good accountant Um, all these different things journalism was there and you know I was probably my father's a mechanic and you know I used to love going out pulling things apart tractors apart and putting them together so I suppose you know and that's from I was knee high um, out on the farm I loved problem solving. That's what you'd call it now, but really it was um, pulling clutches apart or whatever. I was okay. I was doing the higher level maths and I had chemistry on my leave and search. And I remember the guidance counsellor saying when I was 17 or 18, she said, you should pick something that you're naturally interested in and that you're naturally okay at because she said the interest will keep you going for the three or four years if you go in to do a degree, let's say in French, you, the chances are either you aren't going to stay because A, you don't like French and B, because you don't like it, you don't put as much time and effort into it. So anyway, um, what a degree in engineering has afforded me is after the four years and after working as an engineer and deciding to change career path, I could do the master's in journalism. I could train to be a chartered accountant. I could go on to be a lawyer because all those routes with a STEM qualification, the doors still remained open. Whereas if I had a specialised earlier on in accountancy or in law, I couldn't just do a master's in engineering. I would have had a start right back at the start. So why I'm telling you that is if you're undecided whether it's X or Y that you want to go and Y is STEM, 
by doing why it possibly it will leave the x door open for you now you can send me an email after this because this isn't the present what the presentation is about it's just when i was waiting for people to come in i did want to start off that i'm passionate about engineering and science because it has led me to go on to do the guidance council and qualification and more recently finished a master's in business whereas if I had done the business, I couldn't have done the master's in engineering, if you know what I'm trying to say. So enough about me. Um, but I just wanted to know, let you know that I, I'm genuine when I'm talking about, um, you know, STEM. And I suppose because it is it has let me work as an engineer, work in various different industries and then change career direction completely. Um, so apologies. Why is that? Oh, oops. There is my email address. So it's etaf.mcguigan at mu.ie. As I say, you can drop me an email tonight. I probably won't get to it till tomorrow. Um, or drop me an email anytime between now and the 1st of July um, about STEM at Maynooth or about anything else at Maynooth University. Um, I will try and find out the answer for you. I mentioned follow us, following us on social media. I forgot to mention that the the ask on web chat is actually it's basically where you can nearly get an instantaneous answer it's live on our website during during office hours where we're alive in the admissions office answering your questions and sometimes we can answer them straight away sometimes some students will ask me i can't speak for my colleagues ask me more challenging questions that i don't know the answer to and it just takes me a while to get back to you but it's, it's facility there for you also um, so I mentioned my name is Ita, I'm joined by my brilliant colleague Laura who's answering the Q&As, but also we are very privileged and delighted that we have a fourth year MH201 science student um, here to talk to you about their experience and um, it's not prescripted, it's a series of questions and if you have any questions that you want us to ask our student, uh, pop them in the, the chat box and it's about MH201. Um, so what i'm going to cover from so it's eight minutes past eight i'm going to finish up about five to nine um so i'll talk for about 30 minutes and then i'll introduce claudia to you um so we're going to talk introduction hopefully i've covered that mh201 our general science degree then i'm going to talk to you about special specialist science degrees computer science and engineering and robotics um the if you join as as a science student, you come into the Faculty of Science and Engineering at Maynooth University. It's probably one of the most dynamic well, um, faculties in the country. Um, it's growing continuously, um, evolving um, and making course developments the whole time. And if you come into any of those core, any of those departments, you will be sharing lectures with science students from across the Faculty of Science and Engineering. And hopefully Claudia will mention later about it's kind of a tight knit um community in the faculty of science and engineering with academics and students there's a great relationship with our students and the academics a very much open door policy um between them um if you come in to that faculty you will be taught by leading academics and i mentioned in the seven o'clock session you know, as a science graduate from, or engineering graduate from Maynooth, you're highly, highly employable. Why are you highly employable? A, you're taught by leading industry experts, uh, academics. A, you're also, you're taught academic, but you're also taught a great skills like teamwork and leadership and um, problem solving. That, and, and I mentioned earlier, you know, about my career changed, uh, that um, STEM qualification enabled me to do that. But any of our graduates are highly sought after in, every, in anything from the financial sector to project management to laboratories or to any, any of, I suppose, traditional STEM um, career. And, you know, I mentioned, you know, the chartered um, accountancy earlier on. And the reason I mentioned that was my sister was a chartered accountant and she did finance and um, in, in college, she knew from the start science wasn't for her. But when she joined one of the big four um, accountancy firms, she was telling me that she couldn't get over how many science and engineering graduates were training to become chartered um, accountants 
joining her and commerce graduates and other business graduates and accountancy graduates. And I remember being out with her one night and I got talking to her, her HR manager, and I said, I believe you take on science and engineers. And why is this? And she said that it's because of the analytical skills they developed throughout their undergraduate studies. They're, they're second to none. Um, they're so used to working in teams. Um, they don't stop until they sort out a problem or get the, get the answer of it. She said their skills that they develop are highly employable, nearly in accountancy sectors, but in huge range of sectors. So back to what I was saying, if you're unsure um, what course to do, just be just rest assured that a STEM doesn't close the door to you on any. So any of our students are highly valued in many sectors. So MH201 is our, probably our flagship, well, I call it the flagship program in Maynooth University um, in, in the sciences. Um, the leave and cert requirements are as per the slide. You'll see that um, English and Irish are required unless you have an Irish exemption and a science subject, which is one of the list there. There's no 4H7 maths requirement. And interestingly, and um, worth pointing out, there is no language requirement uh, for MH201 or any other science um, or engineering courses in Maynooth. Last year, um, MH201 was 401 points. And we are very delighted, or very happy actually, um, that many of our students, our excellent students and graduates have come in through the QQI or the PLC links. So if you think, if you have a bad day at the office and you're leaving cert and maybe you don't get the points required or you fall short, do consider going through the P PLC or the QQI link um, because you can get in through first year rather than possibly repeating your leave. And a QQI is a good alternative and there is QQI information on our website. Um, we can send you that information um, if, if you want to send me an email at any stage, even if you get your leave and cert results or and think, oh, what did she say about QQI? Others actually, you know, do a QQI that possibly do have the entry requirements, but they want to taste or sample science and ensure that this is the course for them. Um, so we've great links with many uh, for their education um, institutes around the country, and um, that, that, that's an option um, for you. Now, a lot of people say to me, um, you know, what is it about doing general science? Like, what will it be? Why should I do it? So hopefully I'll cover that. Um, what I like about it and why I would encourage anyone to consider is, is you will not get the opportunity or the flexibility in many science courses around the country that you get with MH201. Really and truly, it is your degree. And when I say that, I mean, because if you come into some mainstream or discipline specific science degrees, you don't have much flexibility or choice. In MH201, and Claudia will talk about this later, um, so I don't want to talk too much about what Claudia will cover. It's actually your choice. So you're taking ownership of your degree from day one, or should I say from week four? I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So you get to couple or pick subjects that you possibly cannot combine in any other science course around the country. So it really is a degree for you to shape yourself and it's your choice. And as I say there, your future. So you're, 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 you know, you're taking that first step in choosing your career, but don't get me wrong, your career could change or your uh, choices could change in first and second, your interest years, or interest could change over the years, but it's your first step in shaping your uh, future. Now, why did I say about uh, your choice of subjects? You've got four weeks. So when you're filling out your CEO, by coming here tonight, you know, you're ticking another box by making a more informed decision on your CEO and on your future. So when you come into MH201, you might think, okay, well, I'm doing biology, so I better do biology. I'm sure I'll do chemistry and physics because I heard of them at school. Well, there's other subjects in MH201 that I want you to open your, I suppose, mind to even consider exploring. You've got four weeks to decide. And yes, after the four weeks, you might still say, well, Ita, you told me to try all the other ones. I did try all the other ones, but I'm come back to my original tree. And I'd say, brilliant. 
that's a really informed decision because you tried the others. If you say I'm picking these three because I think, well, I'm 60% sure this is what I want to do. That's not an informed decision. You've got four weeks that not many other universities offer you to shape your degree. Why not go into all these other subjects and try them out and open up your mind? And you know what? we done a survey at the start of um, 2021-22, so just September, on those who came into MH201 and after trying out degrees, 40% of them decided actually, or for trying out modules, changed what they thought they were going to do. I'm also going to cover um, transfer options because some people come into MH201 because of the flexibility, but other people come into MH201 because possibly they fell short and didn't get the points on um, biotechnology. I'm going to just say biotechnology because it's the top of my, on the list, um, but there's other degrees. And I'll, I'll cover that too. But I should say that I remember talking to some students and they came into MH201 and they came in because that second point that I said, because they didn't get the points to get into, say, biotechnology. I can't remember which of the degrees it was. But they said they enjoyed the freedom so much in MH201 and their diversity and them shaping their own future that actually when the applications opened to transfer into year two of biotechnology, for example, they didn't even put in an application because they were so happy in MH201. So, you know, when you start your university journey, and I said at the 7 p.m. session, school days weren't the best days of my life by a long shot. University was. I really, really enjoyed it. And I want you to come in and enjoy your university experience and enjoy it by doing your research now um, and deciding if science is for you. But when let's say you decide it is for you, when you come in during those four weeks, find your feet, find out what really floats your boat and um, find out what courses or modules that you really like, but do that after you try everything um, there. So let me just do one. You pick, there's, you have to pick maths. So in first year, you will study math, mathematics and you'll pick three other subjects. Some people will say, brilliant, Tita. I actually want to con continue studying maths. Uh, that's what I want to specialise. I want a pure maths degree or I want a maths plus X degree. Other people will come in and go, oh, have I just studied maths in first year? And I say, yes, you, you study maths. You can drop it after um, first year if you don't want to continue it. And they'll say, well, I'll definitely drop it after first year. But I will mention a lecturer later on who's running an event that you might be interested in going. Her name is Dr. Neve Cahill. And I remember talking to her and she's one of our excellent lecturers. And I said, um, she's younger than me. And I was saying, Neve, tell us about why you came into MH201. And she says, I just love the flexibility of it. And I said, I, and what about, so you always knew you wanted to do maths. She was no absolutely not, didn't like maths in secondary school. And my intention was to pass maths and get out of it as soon as I could and specialize in my other subjects in year two. And I said, wow, what happened? You're, you have a PhD in maths and statistics in your lecture in maths. I said, what, what happened there? And she goes, I come in and something happened in first year in maths. Some spark went off in her head and fell in love with maths and actually kept on maths. So again, come back, come in to us with an open, open mind. Um, so that's maths covered um, and then you pick three other subjects from biology, chemistry, computer science, data science, engineering science, experimental physics and maths physics. Now some of those you will have heard of at school so you might come in and that's why you might be tempted to stick with the ones that sound familiar or that you might have in your leave insert but during that four, four weeks why not find out more about let's say engineering science. What is it about Maybe you'll fall in love with it. Data science. Wow. Did I hear something? Did I watch something on Netflix a couple of years ago about the elections and how data science kind of um, not rigged the election, but definitely swayed the election from one of the candidates to the other candidate? You probably know who I'm talking about. But I can't say it. Um, how did data science do that? How is data science helping fight COVID? How is data science help invite or helping um Climate change, how is data science helping our health by um, feeding um, data from our Fitbits to health insurance um, in the States? How are we getting X? Why am I getting um, tokens from Tesco in X product and you're getting tokens from um, Tesco in Y product? How am I getting these targeted emails? Why is these notifications 
I'm jumping up on my social media feed. It's all data science. Data science can be used for the good of humankind. I did mention the, the elections. That's probably a negative, negative one. But um, and I should have said, you know, well, I know money is important to everyone, but don't pick a course based on the money. Um, do pick it genuinely on that you're going to be interested in because the chances are of succeeding is higher if you're interested in. But saying that, I shouldn't mention that, you know, the recent report shows that the highest paid graduates in the States are the data science, data scientists. Um, computer science, um, similarly, the growth in computer science um, in the jobs in the Irish and, and worldwide are huge. The engineering science, you know, if you are sitting there and you're going, um, I'm not sure if I want to do engineering or science at Maynooth University. Well, did you know if you come into MH201 or possibly you're sitting here listening going, well, I can't do engineering at Maynooth University because I don't have a higher level. I'm doing ordinary level. Well, if you think, OK, I might be interested in science and I'm going to try engineering science, you might fall in love with engineering science. And, you know, you can then transfer into year two electronic engineering with ordinary level maths but year one passed in MH201. MH201 is kind of limitless you know it's, it is actually no no bounds um, and I'll talk about that in more detail but during the four weeks back to what I originally said don't come in with a closed mind. My my hope for you is that during, so you're doing your research now for your CEO when you get into MH201 if you're interested in it that you will use that four weeks wisely by be, be a bit nosy go into everything and then, as I say, if you say, well, I still want to do the first three, she, she didn't know what she was talking about. That, that's fine, but that's more informed. But you might be one of those 40% who actually change and go into, might fall in love with mathematical physics or experimental physics or chemistry. Um, because you will hear from Claudia, most people, well, you know, most people in, the, in your class won't have three science subjects in their leave insert. Some in the class will possibly may have chemistry from leave insert. Other, other the person sitting beside them might have never studied chemistry before. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll let Tony talk about that. But in second year with MH201, you continue with three subjects. Now there is optionals there with electives and critical skills. And I can't remember if I'm, if I mentioned um, it before, but we will deliver a prospectus to your doorstep. I, I have to say I'm old fashioned. I like to have a. Um, hard copy in front of me because I can put X's through what courses I'm definitely not interested in and then I'm left with a few courses that I am interested in or vice versa. We'll deliver one of them to your door if you go onto our website or even pop into the Q&A there to Laura and I'm sure she can copy and paste the link into order or prospectus. Uh, Laura, sorry for putting you on the spot. Um, in third year, continue with two of your subjects and in fourth year, continue with two or one of your subjects. Now, um, so you might say, how will I find out all that information? Um, there's a great uh, database on our website. If you go into minutesuniversity.ie, click up at the top and go into the undergraduate, go down to the Bachelor of Science MH201, click on that blue link, and then that'll bring you into description, course structure, blah, blah, blah. Click on course structure. And then those are the, the subjects that you can study in first year. Oh, each of those have a link. Click on, say, for example, the data science, and then that'll open up exactly what you're going to be studying in the first semester. What does that entail, et cetera? Now, if you can't find that link, you should be able to find it, no bother, on the website. But if you can't find it or you think, oh, God, what was she talking about there? Send me an email and I'll send you, send you on the link. That's, that's why I'm saying emails are good. You'll see, <clears throat> first year, all subjects are worth the same. Then second year, third year, fourth year is mapped out as so. Now, please don't say, don't, don't ask me at the end or don't put in the question, uh, which should I do, a, a double major or a single major? I would always say to people, worry about that in third year. And even saying that, worry about that towards the end of third year. My mission for you, well, my mission for you, should you choose to accept it and to put MH201 on your CEO, my mission for you would be to come in and enjoy your four, first four weeks and by experimenting all those subjects. And after those four informed weeks, 
you will be happier in first year. And I will tell you, your career or your interests may change towards the end of first year. You might think, I'm going to specialise in, let's say, for example, I'm just calling out these because they're at the top of my head. Let's say chemistry, biology and physics. By, so you might say, well, you know what? I'm definitely dropping physics. You might go into third year specialising in physics because you might have you might really enjoy it in second year that you might not have enjoyed as much in first year so come in with a very open mind um that's what i was just saying don't worry about what you're going to be doing whether it's a single or a double major um i should say and i forgot to say it until the end on the, on the 7 p.m talk a lot of people say to me oh is a mph to own is general science degree and i'm saying yes but it's probably one of the most flexible degrees in the country in stem as in science that allows you to pick what matches your interest because you will find other institutions may offer okay you have to go down the biological sciences route or you have to go down the chemical sciences route or you have to go down the physical uh, sciences route and I don't know that you might be like, well, actually, I like chemistry as much as biology, et cetera. So MHO1 allows you that flexibility. But then you might say to me, yeah, but it doesn't have a work placement. I say, yes, it doesn't have a work placement, but many courses don't have a work placement. My engineering degree didn't have a work placement, but in first year, I showed my initiative um, I got a junior in, no, I was 18, 19 after first year. I'd done, what, September to June in college, probably September to May. So I didn't really have that much experience, but I knew this. So I got into a sewage treatment plant, believe it or not. And I got work experience in there taking uh, soil samples and taking different samples and using analytical skills in the lab. It wasn't really related to my end degree. However, by getting that experience got me better um, experience in second year that got me more relevant experience in third year. And by, I was starting college back in college in the September of say fourth year, in the October of fourth year. So at a full year nearly to go academically, I had a job offer. Now I will put it out there. That I was definitely not top of my class. I have no doubt in the world that it was down to the initiative shown by getting all those work placements. Yes, I had passed, not just about, but I had passed my, my studies up until that stage. But I have no doubt in the world that it was down to the initiative shown that by getting each summer work placement. Probably employers say, well, if you're doing a work placement, you know, that's part of your degree. Whereas it wasn't part of my degree. Um, I went out there and got it. Um, and why I got it, I might as well be honest, was because my brother, he did engineering and he qualified just when I was in first year. He couldn't get a job, could not get a job because every summer he had down on his CV was drawn silage, believe it or not, all around County Monaghan. It, we have a farm at home. So every summer he was working at home. And that's what went against I suppose him, yes, he did get a job eventually, but I remember thinking, right, that's not going to happen to me. And it didn't. And I just want to say again, I wasn't top of my class. So I would encourage anyone that's coming into any degree to actually use your initiative from day one and try and enhance your CV. But then other people say, OK, so it's a flexibility, then you're going to show initiative. But what what will I work at? Like, because I'm going to have a general science degree. So I asked some lecturers of the course. Where tell me, give me some examples of where their graduates went. And these are some of the names they called out. They said, Ita, it is just limitless because of the so many different combinations you can pick at. But basically, it is your oyster, and you will find um, a career path from after the four weeks into first year, into second year, after your work placement, you're going to find out actually my career interests have changed. It basically is your future. You can map it out. And um, so don't be put off that you're not going to be an ex. You can go into anything um, that that you know that that suits your interests. I did mention the transfer options, and I did mention that people do come into MH201 thinking, okay, I'm going to transfer in year two. Some do, but a lot of them, as I said at the start, actually by the time that application process opens to transfer, they don't because they're so 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 happy in MH201. Excuse me. Back to the prospectus, there's this page, sorry, it's a bit grainy. It is really important if you are coming into MH201 and thinking, okay, I'm coming into MH201 because I want to transfer into science education, let's say, for example. Well, 
if you're looking at MH212 there, you have to study maths, biology, chemistry, and experimental physics, and the results plus a possible interview because it's a teaching qualification. There are only three places available for that. Okay, let's take, for example, biological and biomedical sciences. Students must take biology, maths, and two other subjects. So the important ones there are the biology. Well, you're going to have to take your maths anyway. So the important one is the biology. The transfer is based on leave and start performance and first year university results. But then if you see biotechnology, uh, places are limited and based on your first year results. But the important thing there is it is competitive. Do as best you can in your first year exams, but make sure you're picking the most appropriate subjects. I did mention there about coming in with ordinary level maths into MH201, and then after picking engineering science, you might fall in love with engineering. The important thing there is to pick the maths and computer science, engineering science, plus one other, and get 50% in, in your first year exams. Lots of possibilities. Um, drop me an email if you need more information on that too. If you know that you want to come into a specialised science degree, these are specialised science degrees. The ones with an asterisk, if you wonder what the asterisks are, are work placements are part of the degree. The others don't, but remember your initiative, um, show initiative from the day you start. Um, so the biotechnology has the placement. Biological and geographical science, hugely popular course. I think we're going into the third year of intake this year, maybe four. I think it's third year of intake this year. Um, where back to what I said, follow us on, on the social media because you really find the most up to date information on that. Where that course came from was students, guidance counselors were saying, Look at my favorite subjects in my leave insert are geography and biology, but I can't find a course that has that offers those two. So, uh, the geography department and the biology department in Moose um, come up with the expertise and put on that program. And it, it's worth noting that the degree you can go on to teach higher level or be qualified to teach higher level um, biology and geography. You go on to do the PME, the professional masters in education. So it is approved by the teaching council, but it is anticipated there'll be many, many jobs in anything to do with the climate, um, project management, geo surveying, um, huge opportunities with the course. I mentioned um, the biological and biomedical sciences. So after the year two, you specialize in biological or the biomedical sciences, data science. I talked about that earlier. So if you know from now, actually, I, 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 I know I want to do data science. You can come straight into it. The physics and astrophysics, um, theorem, theoretical physics and maths, psychology. You offer, also offer that through arts. The only difference is with the psychology through science, you pick the science as a science subject in first year, pharmaceutical and biomedical chemistry, and then the education. So that's science education, maths and computer science, or pure maths um, education. Um, hugely, all hugely employable areas and great success with our um, uh, graduates. I should have said, I, I don't think I said in this session, you will note or you will see a lot of our uh, leading academics on prime time, on news talk, on RTE news, on everything to do with climate change to the coronavirus. And um, Professor Paul Minor, who heads up the biology department, is always on the media from the start of the pandemic. Pandemic. Why is that good for us? Indeed, our past president, who just finished up in October, Professor Philip Nolan, is is on his important role in in effort. Um, we are also involved in the tracking and the modeling um, through one of the research centers. So Maynooth University scientists um, are recognized nationally and internationally as someone who can speak with authority and with qualification and with experience. So, um, you know, that's, that's important, I suppose, to note. I think I didn't mention that at the start. Computer science degrees, all with work placement. Computational thinking um, combines computer science and philosophy. You can do a year long work placement in that. If you do the work year long placement, that'll be a four year degree. If not, it's a three year degree. Um, so you'll see the difference there in MH601 and 602 is whether you choose to do it through arts or the science. So again, back into first year, you'd be picking an art subject in second year, or sorry, in the 602, you'd be picking the science subject. 
the bachelor I mentioned that to get into an accredited engineers Ireland degree um, it requires a higher level four. I told I told you how to get over if you if you, if you don't get that uh, as in if you have ordinary level you can come into MH two hundred one. Um, if you get over sixty percent in the third year, you can transfer to the ME, which is the Masters in Engineering and Math. And if you do the ME, you will have a six month work placement in fourth year. The ME um, would is recognised if you should you wish to go on to do chartered engineer. Robotics and intelligent devices combines computer science and engineering. Doesn't have the higher level maths. Everything from self-driving cars. And I was saying in the, in the at the seven pm talk, an example of that very simply in our house is the lawnmower. Um, it's it's automatic. It has GPS system in it. Goes out and cuts our lawn, and then comes back when the battery is running low. Right up to assisted living. Uh, or if you're thinking of self-driving cars, I was doing a course four years ago and they said in 10 years time, 60% of the jobs currently available won't be available because robotics uh, will be robots and all the world of robotics will be doing them. And um, so if you're thinking of future, if you're thinking of technology, if you're thinking of design, robotics and intelligent devices is a great course. In fact, there's a built-in work placement with that and the majority of our students would be offered a work, a graduate position on that uh, with their work placement if, they, if they've done a good job in the work placement. Just not to mention Jessica, and I apologize, I haven't updated this, this I should have updated it. Jessica actually graduated with a master's in engineering in the summer of 2021 and is working as a project engineer in Grange Castle. She did not get the H4, we run an engineering maths exam. Put that to the back of your mind, but it's something you may consider. Um, it'll be taking place, the maths exam will be taking place the week after the lead and cert results. So it's not for huge discussion now, but just bury it in your brain someday. Um, you may may some know someone who might want to avail of it in 2022. So Jessica was hugely successful. Um, maths, I'm just gonna, I'm very conscious, Claudia. So. This is Aoife, who failed physics, actually, in her leave and cert commit and, and done physics and biology, and then went on to do a master's in biomedical engineering. Um, the best place to find any information, you know, on Manus is our students. And I'm going to introduce uh, just one last thing. There's an event on tomorrow at 10 a.m. If you register, and I know you're in school, but um, if you register, I can send you a link. If, some, if anyone's interested in chemistry, or biology, I suppose, um, at Maynooth University. There's one of our leading lecturers giving a talk to schools tomorrow. But if you register, um, Laura, can you put in the link there in the Q&A and I can send you a recording of the event tomorrow, should, should you wish. And um, that's another one in February. Keep an eye on all our social media and you'll see these and you can register for them. The time might suit, the day might suit, but if you register, you'll get a link to the recording. Um, so with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen and um, I'm going to introduce Claudia. Claudia, are you there? Oh, I might have to make you co-host, sorry. Um, so I think you should be able to put on your camera now. Yep, there we go. How's it going, Claudia? Uh, thanks a million for joining us. Um, I, and for, for those who might think, oh, Eta and Claudia know each other, Eta and Claudia don't know each other, Eta and Claudia talked briefly at a quarter to five this evening. And then I suppose the first time I really got talking to you was at the seven o'clock uh, class. And Claudia, you were telling me that you went to school in Oldcastle. Tell us about, I suppose, what science subjects you've done in Old Castle and how you found MH201 and how you found Maynooth when you were in Leaving Cert? So um, the subjects I did in school when I was in for my senior cycle uh, were biology and chemistry. So I've always had a big massive interest in biology and chemistry. Um, I've always loved science and um, I never really knew what I wanted to do when I finished school. I knew it would be science related, but I didn't particularly know what course I wanted to do and I went to a few open days around the country so I went to Dublin I went to Galway I went to uh, Maynooth and when I went to Maynooth I was kind of walking around the stalls of the science department so um, and I was talking to some students about what courses were available 
because I had previously kind of looked over the perspectives, but I hadn't really like, um, I hadn't really like uh, gotten a lot of information out of it because I I wanted to get the student's perspective out of it because sometimes you kind of read the perspectives and you're kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, that's well and good, but yeah. what do what the actual students think? Yeah. So um, I was asking them and they all said they were studying like either pharmacam or bio, um, biomed or, um, you know, like uh, the more like um, spe- specialized um, science yeah. subjects, sorry, sorry, science courses that, that Manuth offers. And I was kind of saying to them, I was like, oh, I love biology and I love chemistry, but I don't actually know which one, which course would be best suited for me. And they were saying, oh, what about general science? I was like, oh, what what about that? And they were like, kind of explained to me that um, you get to choose a few different subjects in first year and you get to sample them. And then depending on which ones uh, you like, you can kind of like progress with them throughout the years. And now I'm currently in fourth year doing biology and chemistry as a double major. Wow. So can I just um, ask you then, so you picked the general science because picking the specialized one would have cut out either A, biology or chemistry for you. And at that stage, you were 50-50 with the both of them. So this course, I suppose that's back to what I was saying earlier, a lot of courses you either have to go the biological route or you have to go the chemical route or you have to go the physics physical route so this one met met your needs mm-hmm. and funny you know you were mentioning there about the open day and talking to students and you know it's so true like talking to students will I suppose um help their peers you know probably better than say me and I suppose when you were to go into the open day you were very fortunate it was pre-covid you got to see around Manuth and please God, you know, either our April or our June open day, hopefully will be on campus, depending, depending on what way, what, what is happening next with COVID, but hopefully. But so can, can I just bring you back to coming to the open day? A, had you been to Manuth before? B, what was your first uh, impression? And C, describe it for our listeners who have possibly never been to Manuth University. What is it like? So um, I went to the open day in April 2018. So that was my very first time ever being in Maynooth. I had never been there before. I had friends that had been in Maynooth before, but um, I had never come down to visit them or anything like that. Um, so I remember I was I drove in with my parents to see the open day and I was kind of thinking we were driving on Main Street and all of a sudden we turned and it was the college was there and I was like okay that is everything is seems to be so close together and I really like that aspect because you can go from like you can go get food in town or you can go get like your uh, weekly shop done and then be on campus and like within 10 minutes like that's that's amazing like it's not a hugely big city or like town but it's not like small either like it's perfect for students it's like yeah, and then it, it's it's mainly just students walking around, and the vibe and the atmosphere and the was extraordinary. Like you could, um, everyone was just like so like friendly and so happy, and I, I really really like that aspect about Maynooth. Yeah, and funny you said there you knew of people who went to Maynooth before. So when you started in MH two hundred one, did you have a load of friends in in science courses in Maynooth? Um, I had one friend, but I, one of the people that I went to school with was in the same course as I, I was, but I actually didn't know he was, he was doing it. So it kind of like, I kind of started off fresh, not knowing anyone and kind of like just making friends there. And then like, I, I suppose, did, did that, was that nerve wracking for you? Or did you actually love coming to some place or a course that actually you were there to start fresh or? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's, it's. It's like, um, I'd say it's kind of like nerve wracking for everyone yeah. like, being there for the first time, making new friends. But at the same time, I really enjoyed it because I was kind of like thinking it's like, this is a new opportunity to like make new friends and mm. meet new people. And yeah. you know, like even just like, cause you, when you're in school, you don't have your own friends, but at the end of the day, they're not like, not all of them are interested in the same things you're interested mm. in, like study related. So being friends with people that are like, you know, like interested in the same, um, stuff you are it helps a lot when it comes to studying as well because then you can also study together so so did you get it really hard to get to know people in say a big lem- chemistry or a big science lecture or what was your day one like going into 
labs or, or lectures without knowing anyone from I'm Old Castle. A really chatted per person, so um, I don't have a problem with like turning around and being like, "Oh, hi, hello, how are you?" So um, I don't have a problem with that. And um, so it was okay. And my very first time in lecture, um, I sat down. It was a maths lecture. I remember it was more uh, nine o'clock on a Monday morning, and it was maths with uh, Mark Walsh. And um, I, a girl sat beside me and she was kind of like, just, you know, like asking me, it's like, oh, well, what degree do you study? Because not everyone in your lecture actually studies the same degree you're studying. Um, so I was just saying to her, I was like, oh, I do general science. And she was like, oh, so do I. And like, what, what subjects do you do? So you kind of like do get to, you know, chat to people and just like asking them, like, you know, like small talk. Yeah, so that's interesting. So you said not everyone in the same lecture, or not everyone in your lecture same, study in the same course as you. So do you think that's a good thing, or does, does that expand your kind of friend circle? Or, you know, tell us about how, the advantages in that. So, for example, um, I know people that were doing maths with me in first year that were actually doing psychology through science. Oh, yeah. Or um, I know other people were doing astrophysics or um, I know some of my friends were doing biomed as well. So, you know, like you get to meet so many different people from so many different courses. That Brilliant. Yeah. Small Take me a, lot of, a lot of time when I'm talking about NH201, um, lots of people are excited that they're doing maths in first year. Others aren't so excited. Tell us, you know, what's the crack with students and maths in first year in science. I myself was never a really mathy person in school like um like I, I would I, I did higher level maths in school but I was never like you know like the best of the class or anything like that I was kind of like you know like staying under the radar kind of person so um uh, I was kind of like afraid into my first maths lecture because I was thinking I was like oh my god what's this going to be like is this going to be like so hard for like people that are so smart or is this going to be like really simple but at the end of the day, you kind of do have to think that the lecturer has to be able to accommodate people that have both done ordinary and higher level maths. Yeah. But, you know, like being in the two different, like you study like really different concepts. So, so yeah, it was it, it was great, and um, he was he was able to incorporate like you know all these different topics that we could all understand, and then like kind of build up from there. Okay. Uh, as well, the college counts with the math support center um, in the library, which you know allows students to go in and talk to the staff and the tutors, and they allow like they help you with your assignments or even like going through past questions or if you have specific questions. Yeah, I heard. I heard. Funny, I overheard the students talking about the crack they had in the math support center. So it's not like going into a formal class and you know everyone. And so you could you could be sitting there working on the same maths problem as someone you didn't know, and it's actually you actually strike up a conversation, and it's not like sitting there in a lecture hall. Just just maybe tell me, and we can explain, or you can you can explain to maybe someone doing their leaving sir what the maths support center and why people don't. Well, I believe people don't try to go into it because I've heard so many people have a bit of, you know, this spark up new friendships have a bit of a crack at it and, you know. Yeah, so my very first time walking into the Math Support Centre, I'd say it was about three weeks or two weeks into college when I figured out that was an option available to students. And, you know, it's like free of charge. You can go in whenever you want to and, you know, they'll help you. And I walked in and they're usually like pretty full because everyone seems to really like it and get a really good experience out of it. <laughs> so I kind of, I, I saw this like free like chair that was not taken by anyone. And there was a girl sitting beside it and she was doing the same math assignment I had to do uh, for that week to hand up for maths. And I was kind of, I just sat down and I kind of went, oh, you, you're in the same module I'm in. And, you know, we just kind of started talking and we helped each other with our assignment and then uh, fast four or four years we're like literally best friends now wow wow mm -hmm. actually that just that brought up another point so let's say you I think you said that you did chemistry and biology so that means in first year you started a subject from scratch because you've we talked about maths you've done chemistry and you've done uh, biology in your leave insert so you started something from scratch and um, is that a lot of people will think, oh, I can't do X because I haven't done it in school. Oh, no, I've never done that in school. Oh, what am I going to do? So I'm, I'm assuming in biology and chemistry, you had people sitting beside you who had never done those. But what's it like? What was your third subject? My third subject was physics in first year. 
Yeah. So what was it? What was it like going into physics, never having studied it before, going, oh, what am, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> I remember walking in and thinking, uh, am I going to be lost? Am I going to be just like confused for the entire semester? Uh, am I going to enjoy it? Uh, but then again, I met Neil Trappy, which is the first year co coordinator for physics. And he started the lecture with so many like basic concepts that concept that we all kind of like understood because they were kind of like applicable to our daily lives. So, you know, um, I was really afraid, um, but with the help of the um, physics staff at the university in the department, and even some of my friends that had done physics, physics previously and for their senior cycle in school, I was able to pull physics through and it was actually a really enjoyable experience. Well, that's actually interesting because one thing, like, I suppose I'm not working in Maynooth University, that overly long but uh, the one thing that I um, I have experienced is the friendliness of staff but what's it like coming into Maynooth University as a student dealing with academics do you find it like oh I'm afraid to ask a question or they'll think I'm what, what what's the dynamic there like um I, I suppose it does depend on each student because I myself would be the type of person that I'd just, I'd, I'd put up my hand in the middle of a lecture and just ask a question if I don't understand something. Um, but it is kind of daunting at first to go up to a lecture for the first time and be like, here, I actually don't understand this. Can you go over it? And mm -hmm. you'd, actually, you'd, you'd be surprised how nicely and friendly they are when it comes to like trying to solve students' like, you know, questions because they kind of realize, oh, actually, she's actually taken an interest in what I'm trying to yeah. do. Yeah. You want yeah. to education so um but no it is great and even if you like drop them an email and ask like can you help me with this or they can even like sometimes schedule you in to come into the um their consultation hours during the week they have a few hours a week that they can just take in students and you know deal with their problems. that's that's a really good point i am i'm sure that when they see someone who is eager and enthusiastic and that's the one thing we try and tell students from the day one don't leave it before the week of your exams to ask for help. Lecturers want everyone to succeed. They're there to help. And like what you said, if they see that a student actually wants to learn and wants to better themselves, I'm sure that's that's music to their ears that they just want yeah. to help. Yeah. When I was in second year, um, a lot of us struggled with a part of chemistry and we actually had a lecturer that came up to us and said, whoever is struggling with this can meet up with me one time, like once a week at eight o'clock in the morning to go wow. experiments or problems that you all have around this. So he took his time out of the week. Yeah. Uh, like kind of like accommodated us into like being able to like talk through problems or um, work examples and stuff like that. Yeah. And in fairness, they can't offer that service if they don't know that there there is a problem. So yeah, it's in everyone's interest if someone's is struggling just to just to ask for help. Um, and as you said, like they go that extra mile to to help you. Um, we're coming up to twenty fifty three, Claudia. I'm going to ask you. Um, rewind to the seventeen year old, eighteen year old Claudia filling out her CEO form and answer this truthfully. God, I could I could be putting my job on a light on the line here. Um, any regrets in coming to Maynooth University? Um, no, I don't have any regrets about coming to Maynooth. Um, What's the highlights? I I've loved every second of it, and actually, I'm actually really upset it's coming up to an end. Um, um, I, I I've loved every second of it. I've loved every lab I've done, and I've loved all my lecturers. They've been all so helpful and great, and it, it's been an, an incredible like experience just to even learn from them. Um, but um, I I've no regrets, and everything has been kind of a highlight. I know there's up times and down times. Mm. Yeah, that's that's life. And then your advice to your if say there's someone here thinking about um, MH201 or any any science in Maynooth, but because you're studying MH201, what's your have you have you any advice that you wished someone had given you when you were filling out your CEO form? So um, when I was filling out my CEO form, I kind of looked at every degree that was available that would teach science and somehow because I was kind of like, what if I have a really bad day to deal with my exam and it doesn't go well. Um, but then I kind of should have trusted myself a little bit more about that. Um, 
but manure was my first option and like I, I I was I was certain I would get it but I was you know like you do have that little doubt yeah. um but I wish I had have tried to you know get more information from the student's perspective um I know now we do have um we do I'm I'm, I'm a student ambassador so I we do um Instagram takeovers like a couple of times a week um, on the on Minutes Instagram and we ask people to ask us questions and we try to give them as much information as we can. We also have the uh, MU Ask a Student uh, platform where people can kind of like direct message us, it's kind of like WhatsApp and they can ask us anything they want about the course, like student life, like clubs and societies, like accommodation, anything they want. So I wish I would have used a platform like that to try to get in touch with them, um, students to kind of like gather more information about what my experience would be. So I wouldn't have felt as nervous about certain things as I did. Brilliant. With four minutes to go, if anyone has any burning questions if you want to type it in and Laura can call it out Laura is there any um outstanding questions that need or are needed answering no I think you have everything answered there covered perfect that. and um would you mind or if, if anyone wants again my email address um maybe um I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll share my screen just with the um just with my email address, sorry. Um, let me press escape. Oh, I have to, right, um, there's my email address if anyone wants to take it down because I am conscious we're three minutes from the end. Um, Claudia mentioned the social media platforms and um, you will find them there, but my email address is there, happy to answer any questions um, that you may have maybe not tonight, I might go and get a cup of tea tonight, but I'm available back in action um, tomorrow. Um, so um, it, I just want to thank uh, Laura, first of all, for all our help in um, answering Q&As from seven right through tonight. Laura, thank you so much. Claudia, it, it has been a pleasure talking to you. And now that I've got to know you from the 7 p.m. and the 8 p.m., you're on my radar. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be asking you a few more questions. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has attended tonight. Um, and please do not hesitate. Our Ask a Student platform is on the website. We have lots of ways we can you can you can reach us through social media, etc. And you've got my email address. Um, and I think is there one? No, sorry, Laura. I see that that last question is answered. Um, just like to thank everyone, anyone who's doing their leaving cert or applying through the CEO. Best of luck with that. But please reach out. Um, to any university, any admissions office and ask questions um, no more than um, Manusi University and, and myself, but to ask the questions and this is your future, your decision. We're here to help. We want you to be happy. And on that note, I'm going to thank everyone and say goodnight. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>